Hi everyone, this is Cyril Peterson and today we'll be looking at the choice of Apostle Matthias. Remember Matthias who was chosen to replace Judas? Now the question is Matthias or Paul? We've had this conversation before. We've spoken about it before and today we're gonna look into it and you'll be surprised at my perspective on this one. Stay tuned. Before we go into the video, please like subscribe and hit the bell icon to get more notifications see you on the flip side hi everyone um, welcome to our latest episode and today we are looking at an issue which i believe will make some people a little bit upset with me because of how much we like and regard Apostle Paul and man I like the guy as well he's, he's inspirational but some of our perspectives concerning him are misplaced I believe and I'm gonna go through a journey through the scriptures with you and you can decide for yourself so we see that there was the 12 apostles and then Judas you know he killed himself suicide you know, he betrayed the Lord Jesus uh, for 30 pieces of silver know and fulfill the scriptures we know the story of judas right i'll make a video on him soon and then we see that the apostles replaced judas with matthias and now the replacement of judas with matthias has become a trending issue in the church that um, matthias should not have been added the god's choice was paul but men chose matthias there is the argument. I beg to differ with that argument. And my argument is solely based on what I've read in the Bible. That our opinions are not always correlating with what scripture teaches. And we're going to look at what scripture teaches. And then we're also going to look at what Paul himself had to say on this matter. And I think it would be wise to consider what even Paul himself says. You know? So, um, so we find that in Acts chapter number one, um, the Lord Jesus resurrect, has resurrected for 40 days. He's appearing to people and then he ascends up into heaven. And after he ascends up into heaven for 10 days, the church is praying in the upper room. And in those days, um, Peter then releases a word. And Peter calls the book of Psalms about the life of Judas and the betrayal of Judas and how Judas needs to be replaced. Let me give you a disclaimer on that. In Luke 24, now Luke is the writer of both Acts and Luke. And in Luke 24, Luke tells us something. Luke says the Lord Jesus unlocked the understanding of the apostles of the scriptures. He unlocked their understanding. So he opened up their understanding. So the understanding the apostles had was a divine understanding. So that's what you need to understand, that unto them was given divine understanding of the scriptures. So Peter, quoting from the book of Psalms about how the bishopric of, of um, Judas must be taken, is an enlightened understanding. You understand? So Peter was wiser than you and I, I believe. So let's humble ourselves a bit. Let's also look at apostleship. Um, there are three levels of apostleship. The first level of apostleship is Jesus himself. Um, he's an apostle in his own class. He is an apostle in his own level. He was sent by the Father. And he was an apostle. The book of Hebrews 3.1 says, Wherefore, brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ the righteous. So Jesus is an apostle on a class of his own. And then we have the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Now there is a criteria which must be fulfilled to be part of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And one of those criteria is that you must have walked with him in his earthly ministry. If you could not have walked with him in his earthly ministry, you cannot be one of the 12. Now unfortunately, Paul was not there Paul did not walk with him in his earthly ministry he did not 
So Paul does not qualify to be one of the twelve. He does not qualify, unfortunately. He is still an apostle, but he's not one of the twelve. Because the third level of apostleship, it is post-resurrection apostles. Those who are apostles after the resurrection. Your Timothy, your Paul, your Andronicus, you, you name them. You know? Yeah, but that is a story on, a, on its own for another day. So today we are looking particularly at the twelve. The twelve apostles of the Lamb. And how Matthias was the twelfth apostle. So now here is how the story went. In Acts chapter number, number one, from verse 22, we read that beginning when, when Peter gives the criteria of the twelve. He gives us the criteria. Listen to what Peter says, Acts 1, from verse 22. Beginning from the baptism of John, unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. So to be one of the twelve, you needed to be a witness of the resurrection. And you also need to be a witness of the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus. Beginning at John, up until the crucifixion and resurrection, you must have seen him crucified, you must have seen him after his resurrection. You must have seen him ascending. So to be a witness with them, you must fulfill that criteria. You must fulfill the criteria. It makes no sense to say Paul is God's choice. Says who? Who says Matthias was not God's choice? Says who? Let us look into what the scriptures have to say into these matters. Verse 23, Acts 1, 23. And they appointed to Joseph called Barsabbas, who sent him as Justus and Matthias. So these two were the only two which fulfilled the requirements. It was the only two. The only choice was between these two and they are the only ones who, fit, who fitted the description. Now God must tell them which one of these two has he chosen. And so now the casting of lots happens. So in the casting of lots, names are written on a lot. And they shake it up, the names which come up, that's where the lot has fallen. So, verse 24, And they prayed and said, Thou Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen. So the apostles prayed on it. They prayed and said, show us which one you have chosen. And God, using lots, showed them which one he has chosen. I don't know what's the big deal about this. That he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he must go to his own place. Verse 26. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Now, this is where the argument begins. That this is the last time we hear about Matthias. We hear nothing else about Matthias. Read your whole Bible. We hear nothing else about the other apostles as well. Does that make them illegitimate? The only apostles upon whom much focus is given is the Apostle Peter, the Apostle James, the Apostle John, and the Apostle Paul. Only four apostles are mentioned and followed throughout the New Testament, particularly four apostles, Peter, James, John, and Paul. The other remaining nine are not so focused upon does it make the apostleship less legitimate? No. It just so happens that the acts which were recorded and the letters we have are from these four only. So, let us look into this issue, the issue of lots. So I want us to go into Leviticus chapter 16 verse 8, where the issue of lots first appeared. Leviticus chapter 16 verse 8. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. So this is the day of atonement. You know, when the high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies, a scapegoat had to be chosen. And that scapegoat was chosen by lots. That's how atonement happened, even in the Old Testament, with the casting of lots. This is the instruction God gave. He said, cast lots for which goat I have chosen. One goat for the Lord and one goat which is, be, which is to be released. That's how God even did atonement. So the casting of lots is not evil. We see that the casting of lots was God's idea. Do you see that Leviticus chapter 18 verse 6, chapter 16 verse 8, sorry. We see that happening with the choosing 
of the scapegoat on the great day of atonement. The casting of lots. And then we see it again in the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 1. Uh, when Jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh, and Jonah goes to Tarshish. And when Jonah is on his journey to Tarshish, the Bible tells us that there was a storm which arose, and God caused this storm. And then in this storm, they realize that there is a divine reason for this mess, and they cast lots. And when they cast lots, it proved that Jonah was the one. The lots are yet again correct. We find this in verse 7, in Jonah 1 verse 7. And they said everyone to his fellow, come, let us cast lots, that you might know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. So the lot fell on Jonah. And then the lot was also correct. So we've seen uh, two instances so far where lots were correct in the scriptures. Two instances. Let us go to the Numbers, the book of Numbers 26. Number 26, verse 55 and 56. Let's read what the Bible has to say. Notwithstanding, the land shall be divided by lot. According to the names of the tribes of their fathers shall they inherit. According to the lot shall the possession thereof be divided between many and few. You see that when they also had to inhabit the promised land, when they were inhabiting the promised land, lots were also taken. As to who shall take which portion of the land, they also used lots. So the usage of lots is not evil. Now, let me go into a very key scripture concerning the casting of lots. And we find this in Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 33, it tells us about the casting of lots. You know, we have so many opinions about this, but our opinions are not biblical. That is so sad. Let's hear what the Bible has to say. Proverbs 16, verse 33, The lot is cast into the lap, but the disposing thereof which is the choice or decision is of the Lord. So, the Lord is cast in the lap, but the choice or the, or the decision is the Lord's. So even though we can cast lots, but the decision is still the Lord's. It is still the Lord's decision. Proverbs 16 verse 33. So, the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. We have found over four witnesses about the usage of lots. So what is so evil about it? Why all of a sudden is it evil? Remember, this was in a transition period before the Holy Spirit was poured out from on high. This is a 50-day transition period from the resurrection of the Lord Jesus until the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Pentecost. We see this transition. And in this transition, the Lord used the casting of lots for the witnessing of the resurrection that we need the 12 apostles as well. And his bishopric another must take. And that other was none other than Matthias. Let us remember they prayed about it. Verse 24, 25, X1. They prayed on this matter. And when they prayed on it, they cast, the, the lords were cast upon Matthias. And no other mention is made of him. No other mention is also made of Thomas. Or Philip. Or of Bartholomew. Or of Matthew of any of, of, the, of the other apostles. None of them were mentioned ever again. None of them were. Let my people think, let God's people think. Now, listen to what the Bible says in Acts chapter number 2, verse 14. So we see Matthias being numbered with the 11. Matthias is numbered with the 11 after Pentecost. So before Pentecost happens in Acts 1, he's numbered with the 11. Even after the Holy Ghost is poured out, he's still numbered with them. Even when the Holy Ghost is in them, he's still numbered with them. We find this in Acts 2, verse 14. It says, Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judah, and ye all that dwell in Jerusalem, etc., etc. We see that Peter stood up with the eleven. There are eleven others. 11 others brethren so we have to understand that Matthias was man numbered among the 12 so even when the book of Acts was written years years later Matthias is still considered as one of the 12 
Let's study the chronology of the narrative when the book of Acts was written. It was written long after the military of Paul started, long after that. In fact, the writer of the book of Acts was a close associate of Paul. His name is Luke. He was a close associate of Paul. He worked with Paul for many years. And then while working with Paul, he writes the book of Acts. And as he's writing the book of Acts, he numbers Matthias as well as one of the twelve. Even after the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2, he numbers Matthias as one of the twelve. What more reason do you want? Now, I want to rubber stamp this. I want to as I bring this lesson to an end, I want to rubber stamp it with the witness of Paul. Listen to what Paul himself says in the book of Acts. No, not Acts, sorry. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Listen to what Paul himself says. 1 Corinthians 15. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul is telling us about the post-resurrection appearances of the, of the Lord Jesus. From verse 1, you go down with it um, until verse 8. It tells us all the people Jesus appeared to after his resurrection. Listen to what Paul says. Listen to Paul's account. Um, verse number 4 it says and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures verse 5 and that he was seen of Caiaphas who is Peter and then of the twelve and after that he was seen of about 500 men at once of whom the greater part remain until this day and some have fallen asleep after that, he was seen by James, and then of all the apostles. And then verse 8. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as one born out of due time. So Paul, he says, yes, I was born out of due time. And he also appeared to me as well. But Paul is saying, he is counting the twelve. He says he was seen as the twelve. So Paul is recognizing a group of apostles as the twelve. He recognizes the apostleship of Matthias. We know how bold Paul was, but Paul was also humble. And Paul also recognized the apostleship of Matthias. If Paul himself recognizes the apostleship of Matthias, and if Paul himself also does not exalt himself to a position not given to him by God, why should we? Now, I've given you nothing but scriptures. Now you decide for yourself. You think about it. Think about it. Let my people think. So let me know your thoughts on this. And as you let me know your thoughts, also base them on scripture. And yeah, let's have a discussion about it. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video to respond to some of your issues. I'm Cyril Peterson. Uh, please make sure that you click on the subscription icon and the bell icon so that you can get uh, our latest notifications and please give me a thumbs up for this video and leave me a comment and please 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 make sure that you share this video to as many people as you can let them hear the truth thank you till next time cheers